Hi, my name is Tim Sales. Do you know that there are very specific differences in what the poor, the middle class, and the wealthy buy with their money on payday? It's so simple yet so different it nearly knocked me out of my chair when I finally understood it. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about and you can evaluate for yourself why the wealthy keep getting wealthier and the poor keep getting poorer and the middle class are stressed out. To understand this, I need to make sure you understand some basic business terms in the way that I'm using them. The words that you need to know are income, which means money you bring in, expenses, which means money you spend, assets, which is the most confusing one. An asset is defined as something that pays you. If you're an accountant or a financial planner, I just raised your eyebrows a little because the traditional definition of an asset is things you own. More on that in just a second. Liabilities is the last definition and is defined as things that cost you. A house is typically viewed as an asset, but can it actually be a liability? Yes. By the definition I used earlier, anything that costs you money is a liability, not an asset. But to answer your curiosity, yes, a house can be considered an asset. When is it an asset? When it pays you money. If you were to buy a house and rent it out, and it paid you a positive cash flow every month, that would then be considered an asset. One more time on the definitions just to be very clear before we continue. Income is money you make, expenses are money you spend, an asset pays you, and a liability costs you. Now let's look at what the poor buy on payday. On payday, the poor buy what I'm going to call stuff. What is stuff? Inexpensive things that people buy that they don't really need to survive. You go into someone's house and you can't find any counter or tabletop space in the whole house because of all the stuff on it. You can't find a single foot of white space on any wall in their house because of all the stuff that's hanging on it. Where did they get this stuff? They bought it at the flea market, at the garage sale, at the dollar store, at the craft show. Their house and their car is full and cluttered with stuff. So income comes in on payday and then goes straight out the expense column to buy stuff. The poor really never educate themselves on assets and liabilities. The poor justify their buying all of this stuff by claiming that it costs so little. Yes, it was very cheap, inexpensive, not a lot of money. But over the years, it's all they ever had. The problem is their income never produced or created more income. I know this group very well because this was me. This was the way I was raised. I, in no way, am cutting or undermining this group of people or any other group. I just see a lot of financial pain out there and that need not be that way. I only want to help you and hopefully you'll pass this information on to people you care about. Creating wealth is not a mystery. It's a formula. The only reason someone doesn't create wealth is because they don't know or don't apply the formula. Let's continue on and look at the middle class. The middle class is the group that society mistakenly thinks are the rich. They are not. Yes, they typically earn a six-figure income, but what they buy on payday keeps them prisoners of the middle class. What they buy on payday are liabilities. Remember the definition of a liability? Things that cost you? By buying liabilities, the money gets pushed up and out their expense column. Liabilities are items like cars, boats, houses, airplanes, credit card debt. Let me explain the way this happens. On payday, the middle class make a nice big paycheck. Let's say $15,000 for the month. They then split that down the middle and pay their monthly expenses with half, and with the other half, they make a down payment on a new car. The car costs $7,000 down, and after they tack on the insurance and the maintenance, that liability costs them $1,100 new dollars every single month. A few months go by and they want a boat, then a vacation home, a Rolex watch on the credit card, a vacation on the credit card, and before you know it, their liabilities have raised the expense levels to near or above their income levels. They actually spend equal to or more than they make, meaning that they have to go to work and make a certain amount of money every single month because of their liabilities. The other important issue with both the poor and the middle class is that normally all of their income is dependent on their own effort, meaning they've educated themselves to exchange their knowledge and expertise for someone's money. Here's an example. An attorney is knowledgeable about law. 
So people pay him or her money in exchange for that knowledge on an hourly basis. The problem there is that if they're not, the attorney, sharing that knowledge with a client, then the attorney is not making any money. Their stress level is as tight as a piano string. And if you were to ask them to go to dinner with you, they very rarely can because of how much money it'll cost them to take that time off. On the surface, life is merry. The reality is that it's a roller coaster ride. That's the middle class. Now let's look at what the wealthy buy. On payday, the wealthy buy assets. Again, an asset is something that pays you. If you want to become wealthy, buy assets that then earn you more income. The money wheel looks like this. Buy assets that produce cash. That then buy more assets that produce more cash. That then buy more assets that produce more cash. The wealthy spend their money and buy things that produce more money. Here's a couple of examples of assets that produce more income. Investments are the obvious. Stocks, bonds, real estate. Education is another asset. If you learn how to do something and actually do it, that produces more income, that's buying an asset. I heard a great expression once. If you think education is expensive, you should see how expensive stupidity is. Another example of assets you can buy that pay you is businesses, especially those businesses that can create a passive income. Passive meaning that once you build it up, it pays you whether you're still building it or not. A little example is if you buy a pinball machine and put it in a barber shop. You don't spend any of the profits. You save them until you can buy another pinball machine and put it in another barber shop. This, by the way, was Warren Buffett's first business. Warren Buffett, by the way, is one of the top two richest men in America. The wealthy are extremely eager to find those passive income businesses because it continues to pay them month after month, year after year, long after they've stopped working the business. That's actually the way I created my millions. I found a passive income business that I built up, and it continues to pay me month after month, year after year. I then took those profits and multiplied them in another passive money business, and then again in another. In conclusion, here's what I've learned. You can't find these passive money businesses unless you're open to hearing about them. Then once you find them, be willing to research them. The reason I say this is that I answered a hokey little ad that I ended up making a couple of million dollars from, simply because of that ad. So these businesses are out there, you just got to find them. You've also got to be educated enough that when the right situation does present itself, you don't miss it. So remember, the poor buy stuff, the middle class buy liabilities, and the wealthy buy assets, preferably businesses that can create passive money. Then take that money and buy another asset that produces more money. That's the wealth creation formula. I sincerely hope that you've learned a couple of things from this explanation. I'm Tim Sales. Thank you.